On the 15th of June, Airbus did its first test flights with its new A321XLR. But what's so different with this Airbus A321 and what's the point of developing long-haul single-aisle aircraft? Do they really stand a chance against the wide bodies? Stay tuned. Long-haul flying actually started with single-aisle aircraft. The first aircraft to connect the continents was aircraft like the Boeing 707 and the DC-8. But after the introduction of the three jumbos, the Boeing 747, the McDonnell Douglas DC-10 and the Lockheed 1011, after that it has really all been about wide bodies. So we have gotten used to, if we are going to do flights for longer than five to six hours, to fly with an aircraft that has at least two aisles. But that might be about to change. When Airbus entered the arena back in 1974, they did so with a wide-body aircraft, the Airbus A300. And it wouldn't be until 1988 until they came with their single-aisle Airbus A320 family, and that's what we're going to be focusing on today. The Airbus A320 family was launched in direct competition to Boeing's 737 family, but like I said, they launched it back in 1988, which means that it's now been in production for 34 years. And it was because of that, back in 2010, Airbus launched their A320neo new engine option family. The new engine option upgrade was fitted to almost the entire Airbus 320 family, the Airbus 319, the 320 and the 321, but not the 318, the baby bus, which was the least popular version of the family. But there would also be a couple of completely new versions of the Airbus 321. The first of which was the Airbus 321LR, long range, that was introduced back in 2018. The LR was upgraded to be able to take a slightly higher maximum takeoff weight of 97 tons, and it was also constructed to be fitted with something called auxiliary center tanks, or ACTs. It could take a maximum of three of those, and they are shaped just like normal cargo containers and fitted into the cargo holds. The LR also received 180 minutes ETOPS approval, meaning that it would be able to fly up to 180 minutes on single engine away from its closest alternate, enabling it to fly over large swaths of the oceans. But apart from that, the Airbus A321LR was essentially the same as any other Airbus 321neo. If the airlines would decide to remove those auxiliary center tanks, it would be the same aircraft. Like I mentioned, the Airbus 321LR was launched back in 2018, but even before then, some airlines had started to talk to Airbus about creating an even longer range version, an extra long range version, which is what XLR stands for. Now, the XLR was not going to be just another LR with a few more fuel tanks added to it. No, this was going to be a bit different. It took a while for Airbus to come out with the specifications, but once it was launched in 2019, we uh, got to see that the range was going to be about 4,700 nautical miles and a maximum takeoff weight increase with about 4 tons. So what's the big difference then? Well, in order to answer that question, we first have to look at how the LR and how the XLR is expected to be used and how they're used today. There is a false notion out there that these aircraft are only bought by low-fare airlines who want to do long-haul flight with single-aisle aircraft, but in fact it is much more complex than that. Out of the over 550 orders that exist on these two aircraft right now, a majority of them are actually from more traditional long-haul airlines. And the reason for that is because narrow bodies are generally more efficient than their wide body peers. So having the option of both narrow bodies and wide bodies with the same type of range gives much more flexibility to an airline uh, to choose depending on how much demand there is on a specific route. A good example of that is for example Aer Lingus who is flying their 321 LRs from Ireland to the east coast of the United States and they have the choice between their Airbus 330s and their 321 LRs depending on you know which day in the week that there's more demand on each flight and so on. And of course on top of that the Airbus 321 LR can also be used on short to medium haul within Europe efficiently as well. But it turns out that it's not quite as easy as that. Because like I mentioned before, the Airbus 321LR has a range of 4,000 nautical miles with 206 passengers. But that is not how Aer Lingus have set up their 321LRs. Instead, they have reduced the number of passengers that they can take down to 184 passengers in a two-class cabin. 
And another competitor of theirs, JetBlue, is also doing transatlantic flights with the 321LR, and they can take even less passengers, 138. Now, to put that into perspective, that's actually less than what can be fitted into a single class Airbus 220, which is 140 passengers. Now, the reason behind this reduction in passengers, I'll tell you all about after this short message from my sponsor. Reading text or watching video can be a really great way to learn the basics of a subject. But if you're like me, and I guess that you are, in order to really learn something, you need some hands-on practice. You need to really use the knowledge in order for it to get in here. And this is where the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant, is such a brilliant tool. Because Brilliant is an online interactive STEM learning platform that helps you to get a much deeper understanding of the concepts in math, science and computer science by taking you through the subjects piece by piece in a really hands-on way. And as an educator myself, I really love how Brilliant is doing this and I really enjoy using it. If this sounds interesting to you, which I really hope that it does, then the 201st of you who clicks on the link below, which is brilliant.org slash mentor now, will get a whopping 20% off their premium one year membership. So go down and start learning today. Now it turns out that the reason that the airlines are choosing to fit so few passengers into the Airbus 321LR is quite simple. Remember how I told you that the 321LR was using something called auxiliary center tanks and they were put into the cargo holds? Well, there you go. If you put a fuel tank into the cargo hold, you will have less cargo hold. And if you're flying long haul, it's likely that your passengers are going to be carrying more luggage. So the more fuel you have in the cargo holds, the less bags you'll be able to take, which means essentially that you have to take less passengers. So the way that these airlines have solved this is they have put more premium economy or even business class seats in. JetBlue is even having flat beds available. And of course, if they can fill up those more expensive seats, that will offset the fact that they can take less passengers. But there is another snag in here as well. And that is on long haul flights, a lot of these airlines tend to also carry cargo. And the prices for air cargo has gone up quite a lot in the last few years. Because of that, the fact that you have less cargo space available and maybe only place to put the passengers' bags in and that's it, also takes away a potential very good revenue streams for the airlines. So this is why you might see an airline using the more expensive, less efficient Airbus 330 or Boeing 787 on a route that doesn't really have much passengers but has a lot of cargo demand. And this puts the Airbus 321LR at a disadvantage. And this is where the Airbus 321 XLR comes in. Because remember, the Airbus 321 LR is really only an Airbus 321neo with some extra auxiliary center tanks fitted to it in the cargo holds. But the Airbus 321 XLR has a completely new center tank installed into the structure of the aircraft. This new rear center tank is added to the structure just behind the wing box on the XLR and it adds the capacity equivalent of four auxiliary center fuel tanks on the LR, but it only adds the weight of one and it takes up the space of two, meaning that on the XLR you will have more fuel capacity available and it's taking up less cargo space and weight. This should make the Airbus 321 XLR a more viable replacement for the Boeing 757-200, but we still have to see how the airlines that are buying it is going to configure it. But in any case, the Airbus 321 XLR is going to be a much more flexible product for the airlines to use. But of course, there's also a snag to this. Because the Airbus 321 XLR is going to get some slightly more powerful engines, um, some upgrades to its landing gear to take the higher maximum takeoff weight, there's also going to be some changes to its flaps and of course the new integrated rear center fuel tanks with all of its plumbing is going to have to be recertified. And now it looks like EASA, which is the European Aviation Agency that's in charge of aircraft certification for Airbus, is looking at some more stringent rules for specifically how internal fuel tanks are being constructed. The new rules are supposed to address how these fuel tanks will behave during an emergency, like for example a gear up landing. 
According to some reports, Airbus may have to redesign the underbelly fairings, which are the normally non-structural fairings that are supposed to streamline the connection between the wings and the body to extend them a little bit, potentially even changing the material in order for this fairing to take up a little bit of load in case a gear up landing would happen. The aircraft that did its test flight back in June had normal fairings attached to it, but it's likely that the production variants of the XLR is going to have to have these new fairings. This will likely add a little bit more weight to the final product, but Airbus has said that it's not going to have a major impact on the range, and they're also in discussion with the ASA about these changes. But what it will definitely do is that it will cause delay to the final delivery of the product. Initially, Airbus had said that the Airbus A321XLR would be ready for delivery uh, towards the end of uh, 2023. And now it looks like it's more likely going to happen in the beginning of 2024. Until then, Airbus is going to continue with its test flight program. The first test flight they did took about four and a half hours. And over the next few weeks, Airbus is going to add more test flight aircraft in order to speed the certification along. So what do I think about this then? Is the Airbus 321 XLR going to be some serious competition for the wide body long haul aircraft? Well, the answer to that is it depends. I think that the Airbus 321 XLR has the capacity and the range to be a viable alternative on some routes. But I also do think that given the fact that cargo is such a high value revenue stream, it is unlikely that on routes where airlines can fit a lot of passengers and a lot of freight, they will go down that route. They will most likely stay with their high efficient wide body long haul aircraft like the Boeing 787 and the Airbus 350. When it comes to Boeing and how Boeing is responding to the XLR, they don't really have a response for the XLR. They're about to certify the Boeing 737 MAX 10, which will have a capacity of 230 passengers, but it only really has the range of the original Airbus 321neo. Now, I did a video about a possible response from Boeing where they could resurrect the Boeing 757 and fit it with new engines and new wings. You can check out that video up here, or you can check out this video, which I think you'll also like. Now, if you want to support the work that I do here on the channel and support my team, consider becoming part of my lovely Patreon family or get yourself some t-shirts, some caps, or maybe even a cup. Have an absolutely fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.